I'm joining you today from the beautiful Southside Library in Santa Fe, New Mexico. This event is part of the NEA Big Read Santa Fe. I'd like to thank our sponsors, the National Endowment for the Arts Big Read, a program in partnership with Arts Midwest, the Friends of the Santa Fe Public Library, the Santa Fe New Mexican, Santa Fe Community Foundation, and three of the foundation's initiatives, Dollars for Schools, Opportunity Santa Fe, and Santa Fe Baby Fund for making this event possible. A special thank you to Henry Lopez and Veronica Regales from the Santa Fe New Mexican for their assistance with this program today. And of course, thanks to all of the wonderful staff of the Santa Fe Public Library. If you have any technical difficulties, feel free to type them in the chat box. And if you have a question or a comment, go ahead and put it in the chat box or the question and answer box, and we will address them at the appropriate time. Today's event is very special, and I'm so happy that you all are here with us. We have over 50 classrooms from Santa Fe Public Schools and participants of all ages and from all over the country with us today. As a book lover and librarian, I'm so excited to host the award-winning author and illustrator of children's books, Juji Morales. Dreamers is one of my favorite books. It is a beautiful story and one that highlights the importance of public libraries in our lives and in our communities. And with me today, I have Therese Martinez. Therese works at the main library and she's helped us with the questions in Spanish that we received. And I'm also pleased to introduce our community partner, Rachel Kucher. Rachel is the project director of Santa Fe Baby Fund and expanding opportunity for young families at Santa Fe Community Foundation. And she's going to join me in conversation today and introduce our guest. Thank you for being with us, Rachel. Thanks, Maria. Um, so I have the honor of introducing our special guest today, Gigi Morales. Uh, Gigi was born in Jalapa, Mexico, the city of flowers and springs. And after migrating to the US in 1994, she struggled with English and loneliness in a culture that was foreign to her, but found solace in public libraries where she read children's books with her son and discovered a renewed interest in stories and art. She's now the author and illustrator of many books for children, maybe you've read some of them, um, including the New York Times bestseller Dreamers, which we'll hear her read today, and Nino Wrestles the World. And among the many awards and honors she has won, Gigi is a six-time winner of the Piura Belpre Medal for an Outstanding Work of Literature for Children that best portrays, affirms, and celebrates the Latino cultural experience. So whether you're a longtime reader of Gigi's work or you're going to experience the beauty of her stories and art for the first time today, I know that all of you in our online audience are offering Gigi a very warm welcome to Santa Fe. Um, so all of you who are watching online from your classrooms or maybe at home with your families, um, can you join me in um, clapping to welcome Gigi today to our, um, to our online presentation? Um, Gigi, would you like to share a few words with us before you read Dreamers? Yes, absolutely. First, I want to say hi to everybody. I see a lot of friends, amigos, amigas, amigues, niños, niñas, niñas. We are here and, you know, like with the magic right now of, of the online uh, connection, uh, I'm receiving you here in my studio, in my home, and I want to, I want you to feel, because that's how I feel, that as friends that we are, that you are coming into my space right now, and I welcome you. Um, I have also some friends here. I'm going to show you my friend who's always with me when we are going to read stories. And here's my friend, Senor Calavera. He has his very special hairdo for today. Um, because he knows that we are gonna be talking about books, that we are gonna be talking about inspiration, we are gonna be talking about stories. And Senor Calavera loves stories. He loves the stories so much that he usually asks me to even put him in some of my books. Isn't that right, Senor Calavera? So Senor Calavera is with me today so that we can do the reading of our book. Um, 
this book, I'm, I'm calling it our book because it belongs to all of us. It belongs to you as well. And today I'm gonna, we are gonna read it together. Uh, a lot of people are saying hi here and I just wanna acknowledge how wonderful is to connect with all of you people some of them that i know you some of them that i don't yet but today we are all friends here sharing um together stories um you see because i'm in my studio in my home um sometimes you will hear noises outside in the street i'm just right here uh you can see the window is right there sometimes people even even walk by my doggy is here um, but given the circumstances, we are going to do our best to do this reading as if we are doing it um, as if we were gathering in the same room. So let's see. Today we are going to read, and Senor Calabera, you're going to be right there so that you can look at the story. And we are going to read Soñadores, que es la versión en español, y Dreamers, que es la versión en English. And Vamos a tener una plática tanto en español como en inglés. El libro hoy lo vamos a leer en inglés. And if you are already, hi everybody, un montón de gente saludando aquí. Hi, all of you. Um, and if you are already, we are going to start reading Dreamers. And Dreamers is a story that I wrote and I illustrated. I love to write stories. Maybe you like to write stories too or you like to write poems, or you like to write songs, or you like to write movies. I like to do all of those things. And when I write those things, I sometimes put them in books just like this one, como en este, The Dreamers. Um, I also like to make images. I like to draw with my pencil. I like to use lots of colors. Uh, sometimes I take photographs. If you do those things, if you like to do those things, or even make videos, you are an artist. I am an artist. And when I make art, when I make images, sometimes I put them in books just like Dreamers. So Dreamers is a book that is based in something that happened to me. This is a story of a mom and a baby who are born in Mexico and then come to the United States. And that means that they are immigrants because they have immigrated from one place to another. Maybe you are an immigrant too. Um, and this story is about how they come to a new place where sometimes they, most of the time, they don't even understand the language, but they also discover a very special place. So, si están todos listos, vamos a comenzar la lectura. And you need to be ready also for some words in English and some words in Spanish. And here we go. This is Dreamers by su servidora, Yuji Morales. And it begins like this. It begins with this image and this girl sleeping on the table. And there are some drawings here. I see a sewing machine here. And here we go. I dream of you, then you appear. Together we became a more love, a more resplendent life, you and I. One day we bundle gifts in our backpack. You see the backpack? And cross the bridge outstretched like the universe. And when we made it to the other side, thirsty, in awe, unable to go back, we became immigrants. Migrantes, you and I, the sky and the land welcome us in words unlike those of our ancestors. There were so many things we didn't know. Unable to understand and afraid to speak, we made lots of mistakes. Now remember I told you that I like to draw and paint? Well, I drew and I painted these images. And I put these images here because those are mistakes that I made too. When I came from Mexico to the United States, I didn't speak enough English. So most of the time I was really afraid 
trying to understand or to speak to someone else. And you see this image I put here, and here is this, the mom with the baby, and she has a phone in her hand. I put this image here, and you see her face like she's worried. I put this image here because when I, I just recently arrived to the United States, I was always afraid to answer the phone because I knew that someone was going to speak to me and I wasn't going to be able to understand. And I put this image here too because I made that mistake too. If I needed to go somewhere, I knew I could take the train and I could use a map to know where to get on and where to get off the train. But this map, um, it was written in English and I couldn't read it the same way. So it was always difficult for me to go places. Or I put this image here too, because I also made this mistake. One day I went into the phantom with my baby and I didn't know that we couldn't be there, but we were playing and bathing until a police person came and told us that we needed to get out. So this mom, who doesn't speak the language and, and she doesn't understand it either. Well, the only thing that she can say is, I, I, I. You and I became caminantes. Thousands and thousands of, of steps we took around this land until the day we found, and I'm gonna show you here in the image, maybe you can see all the many steps that they have given. You wanna see what's the place that they found? A place we had never seen before. Suspicious, improbable, unbelievable, surprising, unimaginable. Do you know what place is this? You probably know already. Yeah, it is the public library where we didn't need to speak. We only needed to trust and we did. Now, I wanna show you something here because this is a page that I always like to, to, to call it like the happiness page because a lot is happening here. You see, this mom and the baby, they are reaching towards this lady who is giving them something. And they are so happy that even the sun is coming out of her backpack. What this lady is giving them is a library card. If you have library cards, you probably know that library cards are like, like magic cards. If you have a library card, you can go to the library and you fall in love with books and you can take them home because you can borrow them. A library card um, gives you happiness and magic and this mom and this baby they are experiencing that happiness and maybe you can see something else here and senor calavera can you see it too look someone familiar is right here can you see him that is senor calavera my friend because he's in the story and you can see him he's really happy as well let's see what happens next Books became our language. Books became our home. Books became our lives. We learned to read, to speak, to write, and to make our voices heard. Someday, we will become something we haven't even yet imagined, but try now. Right now we are stories. We are two languages. We are lucha. We are resilience. We are hope. We are dreamers, soñadores of the world. We are love, Amor, love. And here in Mexico, when we finish a story, decimos algo como esto, decimos. Y colorín colorado, este cuento se ha acabado. And this is the end of the story.
What do you think? Did you like the book? Did you have, have things like that happen to you too? Maybe someday you came to a place where you didn't speak the language and you couldn't understand people or you were afraid that you were gonna make mistakes like the mistakes that I did. Or maybe something really, really um, amazing happened to you and you found a place that where you felt like you were at home and you knew that you were safe there and you could even make mistakes. I hope that you have a place like that in your life. And I know that um, some of you have some questions and people here are saying that they like the book. And I, I'm glad that you like the book because I like it too. I love making this book. Um, and I want you to know that I make this book for all of you. And do we have someone here who is gonna be reading the questions that, that we're reading in advance? Rachel, you're gonna do it, correct? Yeah. So um, we'll start with some questions that were submitted um, by some Santa Fe classrooms. Um, and then uh, for those of you who are watching live, if you want to put any additional questions in the Q&A, um, we'll be also monitoring that. So um, you can start putting your questions there while we start with these. So um, there were some questions today specifically about Dreamers and then some about your work more broadly. So starting with Dreamers, um, students in both Jacqueline Benyajaquez's classroom at uh, Agua Fria Head Start and also Mrs. Gersh's uh, fourth grade classroom at El Camino Real Academy asked, um, ¿Por qué decidió irse a vivir tan lejos? Or why did you decide to move so far away from home? Ah, yeah, ¿Por qué decidí irme a vivir tan lejos? Well, when I came to the United States, you know, remember I told you que yo nací en México. I was born in Mexico. And I was already an adult when I moved to the United States. And no fue algo que decidí. I didn't know I was going to move there. I thought I was going to visit the family of my baby. I had just had a baby. Era yo una mamá que acaba de tener un bebé chiquitito, nuevecito. Y la familia de mi bebé, el papá de mi hijo, pues vivían en Estados Unidos. My, my baby's family, they live in the United States. And they wanted to meet my son. So they, they wanted me to come to the United States. Pero como yo soy de México y yo era una mujer muy joven, yo no pude tener una visa para ir a visitar. They, they wouldn't give me a visa. They, I would, that means I didn't have permission to come to the United States and visit the family of my baby. So I had to go through the process of getting that permission, which is called a visa. Y eventualmente, yeah, they gave me a visa, um, but I didn't know that my visa, it wasn't only for visiting. My visa was for living in the United States. Eso fue una gran sorpresa para mí. Entonces yo viajé muy lejos para poder visitar a la familia de mi bebé para que ellos pudieran conocerlo. Pero al final lo que yo no supe es que pues los Estados Unidos se iban a volver mi hogar. I didn't know that that my the United States were going to become my home. And at the beginning it was really hard because I didn't speak the language. I didn't know how to live there, how to do things there, so I had to learn it. Thank you for sharing that. So um, as another question we got that I think is, you know, along along that same theme is um, Mrs. Gersh's fourth graders asked, what does the mom mean um, early in the book when she says adios corazón? What does she mean? Exacto. Aquí, bueno, a ver, vamos a ver en el libro. En esta imagen, you might be able to see it. There is this banner. It says, adios corazón. And you see, there is a bird that is carrying that banner. En algunas maneras de hacer arte, sometimes painters, they will put banners to have sayings, to say something else that maybe the image wasn't saying. And what it means here is, adios corazón means goodbye, my heart. And it is a way um, that you say goodbye to someone that you love. You know, when someone, your, your friend, your relative, um, your, someone that you love, when they are going to leave and you're not going to see them for a while, you, tú los despides y les dices, adiós, corazón. Y esto es lo que esto quiere decir. Like, she didn't know that she wasn't going to come back like me. I, she thinks she's going to visit. 
and it's not easy to get it because she's not getting permission easily. But what she doesn't know is that she's gonna stay there. And this is kind of like a secret. Here in the image is telling you a secret. It's telling you that, that she, they are saying goodbye to her, that we don't know when she's gonna come back and that a journey begins, a different journey begins. And for that, you say adios corazón because you are telling them that you love them. It's kind of saying like, so long, I'll see you soon. Um, and we had a question. Um, there were some very observant students in both uh, Mrs. Gersh's fourth grade class and also uh, Ms. Moderna's third grade class. And they asked, um, ¿Por qué hay mariposas en cada página? Why are there monarch butterflies on every page in Jamers? Yeah, you see a lot of monarch butterflies, exactly. You'll find them in every page once she starts the journey. You see right there, they begin to appear. And not only butterflies, but also swallows and even bats. And that is because I chose to depict in this book, um, animals that migrate. The swallows migrate, the bats migrate, and the monarch butterflies migrate. Not all bats, only some kind of bats migrate. What does that mean? It means that they are born in one place and they go to another place. Sometimes uh, when it gets, uh, warm and cold, um, they move to different areas of the world. Like in the case of modern butterflies, they are born, there is a generation that is born here in Mexico. Y tienen que llegar hasta Canadá y el norte de Estados Unidos. It's, it's a very, very long journey, but they do it. And it's not easy. The only way that they can do it is through generations. One generation of butterflies has babies and they make they make the trip to certain distance and then they have another generation of baby butterflies and those baby butterflies can go another part of that journey until they make it all the way to their destination. So the way that butterflies, the monarch butterflies do it is amazing. And I wanted to depict them there because they, um, they are a symbol. They are a symbol of us immigrants. Así como los otros emigramos, los humanos, los animales también. And we like to look at butterflies and I do like to look at butterflies and think about how fragile they seem and yet how strong they are by doing this journey of going very, very far distances. Entonces se han convertido, las mariposas monarcas se han convertido en un símbolo de la migración, de los migrantes, de gente como, como yo y gente como muchos de ustedes. And that's what I put them there as a symbol of resilience and how animals also teach us how to live and how to do things. That's beautiful and good job to all of you um, in those classrooms and to our other readers who are picking up on all this symbolism in the books. Um, so um, another question that we received, and I think this maybe uh, refers to the page in the book um, where the mom and the baby are in the fountain, um, which you, you spoke about when you got to that page in the book, um, is ¿Qué vas a hacer si te para la policía por hacer errores? What did you do? I know, that's, that, that's a really important question, isn't it? Because puede dar miedo. Do, do you feel sometimes like, I don't know what to do, especialmente si no hablas el idioma? Um, and, and I'm sure that sometimes, or many of you have wondered like, what do I do if a police tells me that I shouldn't be doing this? Um, am I gonna be okay? Should I respond? How should I do it? In my case, um, I didn't know. And the only thing that I did was to get out of the fountain, of course. Um, and just be careful of myself. I think that anybody who is in front of an authority just needs to learn to be careful and caring and, and not only respectful of other people, but also respectful of ourselves. 
if we are not feeling fine, if we are feeling afraid, if we are feeling that, that maybe we don't know how to answer, it's okay to turn around to someone who can be with you, who can protect you, who can um, take your hand and help you if you need it. That's a very important question. And I think that's a question that we need to answer together. Cómo nosotros, como comunidad, nos ayudamos cuando estamos en un momento que no sabemos qué hacer o que nos da un poquito de miedo o que no sabemos, por ejemplo, el lenguaje. Lo bonito es poder encontrar a alguien más de que podamos agarrarnos nuestras manos and together we can, we can do what needs to be done. We can give an answer o podemos abrazarnos y podemos entonces decidir juntos qué hacer. I will think at that moment, um, there were other people already in the fountain with me, like we were the first ones, but eventually other people came into the fountain and everybody just got out. And at that moment, what I did is I did friends. I made friends with some people. And if you feel that you are sometimes in a place where you feel unsure or that you don't know what to do, look for someone who looks you in the eyes and that you can trust and ask for help, always ask for help. If you don't understand something, siempre pregunta y pide que te ayuden a entender. Eso creo que sería un, una, una estrategia que todos podríamos hacer. I love that, those messages of um, really looking to each other, supporting each other, and that safety also in you know, other people supporting you. Um, so before we, we have a lot of questions about your sort of broader process and how you started writing books and all of that. Um, before we jump to some of those books, Maria and Therese, are there questions in the chat or in the Q&A specifically about dreamers that we should answer before we jump to the others? I, I think there's a few in here, Rachel, um, and some of them are really similar. We've got them in English and in Spanish, and they're very similar. So um, we've got what inspired you to write books? And we have it in Spanish. Como empezó para ser autora, ilustra, ilustradora? Y que dibujaste, como dibujaste sus imágenes? Y que técnica? So what technique, oh. what, um, how did she go yeah. about doing her illustrations? Yeah, well, um, when, when I came to the United States and I saw the public library, como en es, just como en este libro, así como ustedes lo ven, un día llegué yo a la biblioteca con mi bebé y me encontré con muchos libros. I found myself in front of many, many books and I fell in love with them. So, al principio, yo no sabía que podía yo también hacer libros como los que estaban en la biblioteca. I had no idea. But what I knew is that I had stories inside of me. You have stories inside of you too. And I tried to learn how to do it. Um, in my case, I copied. I copied a lot. I saw books that I love. I took them home with my library card. Y entonces yo los ponía en la mesa de mi, de mi, de mi, de mi cocina. Eh, me compré unos lápices de colores, unos papeles y empecé a practicar a hacer imágenes como las que veía yo en esos libros. I start practicing copying images like the ones that I saw in those books. Y empecé también a recordar cosas que yo quería decir, historias, cosas que me habían contado y cosas que yo quería contarle a mi bebé. So I start writing down those stories. And then taking example from the books that I saw, then I start making my own books. Una cosa que he aprendido ahora, something I've learned very recently, is that we all have our own way to make books. You have your own way to make books. And it might not be the same that I have. I can show you a little bit of how I make mine so that you can trust that you will know also how to make yours, that you will find your own way. Por ejemplo, yo escribo una historia. Um, I wrote dreamers. Y hago unos dibujos, I make some drawings. And a mí me gusta empezar con mis dibujos muy chiquitos. Déjenme agarrar una hoja aquí. And you see these little pieces of paper that you see here? Uh, those are my drawings. 
Son bien pequeñitos. I start with very, very small drawings. Y después esos dibujos los hago mejor, los borro y los empiezo a hacer más grandes. And I put more details. Um, and then I go ahead and I, sometimes I also draw. And this, these are my folders when I put my, some of my work. And some, some of those drawings, I paint them. Como estos, miren, a ver si los pueden ver ahí. Está un poquito borroso. Uh, hago muchos dibujos aquí en mi, en, en el papel, con mis pinceles, con lápices de colores, como estos. ¿Y sí? Pero algo que me gusta mucho hacer es, I put these drawings inside of my computer. Maybe you like to work in your computer too. So yo los pongo adentro de mi computadora y ahí empiezo a, a, a ordenarlos. I put them in different places and I see how they look like, whether I like them or not. That's how I do it. I draw, I paint, I put them inside of my computer and I work them out. But you might have a very different way to do it. Uh, maybe you are gonna make a book where you are just gonna use Um, one color and you paint it on the on the page or you are not you're gonna use any words you might have your very own way to make those um, those stories and I can't wait to read them someday or see the books that you are going to be making we had uh, we had some additional questions um, one of them is um, que paso con su esposo. Con mi esposo. Y, uh -huh, claro. ¿cómo, bueno, ¿Y cómo se llamaba su bebé? Ah, bien. Bueno, mi bebé se llama Kelly, pero ya no es un bebé. Ahora es un adulto. Es un adulto muy alto y muy grande. Kelly es su nombre. Y se parece mucho a su papá. A mi esposo, que fue mi esposo en aquel momento, ahora no somos, no somos pareja ya más, pero él es un hombre muy, muy lindo, muy amoroso y que ahora tiene otro bebé. Entonces uh, yo estoy súper contenta porque él tiene un bebé ahora con otra pareja y um, yo participo y juego mucho con este bebé nuevo y yo le estoy leyendo muchos de estos libros que, bueno, yo hice en aquel tiempo cuando empecé a hacer mis libros, when I started making my books, I made books for my baby, for Kelly, who was a baby then. Now I make books for all of you, for all children, and I'm enjoying also to reading books to, um, to my son's brother, little brother, who is a two-year-old baby. And um, now my books are shared with all of you, but also with, with this baby. So this is how things are happening right now. And we have uh, one question that says, why does your dress have flames on it in the book? Doesn't it look like flames? Yes, what is my book? Doesn't it look like flames? I'm gonna tell you a secret. Here it goes. It's actually not only flames. I wanted it to look like flames. I wanted it to look like something that moves, that is alive. Um, But the way I designed it was with paper. I actually used brown paper and gray paper to, to paint this skirt because I wanted, I wanted it to resemble the paper that I use for making my artwork, the paper that I use for making books, the paper that I use to draw to create and paint and, and, and just make art. I gave this lady, this mom, a skirt made out of paper because when I crossed the, the, the border to go from Mexico into the United States, I didn't have the right clothes to come to the United States. I always felt like my clothes was not good enough. And I wanted to, convey that feeling here for this mom, like she's wearing a skirt made out of paper, which is nothing fancy at all. So she's not feeling very comfortable about that. Pero lo que yo quería era to give this, this woman something that is actually very powerful. 
Maybe she feels it's like, oh, it's just paper. I don't like my skirt. It's just paper. But in fact, she's wearing her power in her skirt. Her skirt is like a cape. It's like that that symbolizes her power. Because someday, she doesn't know it here yet, but someday she's going to be writing and illustrating books. And she's going to do it with paper. And paper is going to be her power. And that's what I gave her this skirt to this lady. And yes, it is alive. It is like flames, but it's made out of paper. And the biggest question, the one that's been asked over and over is, how did you learn to speak Spanish? ¿Cuánto se tardaste para aprender inglés? Para aprender inglés. I'm still learning how to speak in English. Can you hear it? Like, like how I sound different because I'm still learning. Um, but I love it that I can say some words in Espanol and then I can say some words in English. I love that I have these two languages. So it's taking me a long time and it's probably going to take me my entire life. And the way that I learn it is, uno is, me gustaba mucho ver Plaza Sesamo, Sesame Street. Do you watch Sesame Street? I love watching Sesame Street. I learned a lot of my words in Sesame Street. And then I will go to the public library and then I will find books and I will try to read them. Now, most of the time I didn't understand. Si estaba en inglés, yo no podía entender lo que decía. Pero si yo miraba las ilustraciones, if I could look at the illustrations, then things started to make sense to me. And then by pairing the images with the words, I start understanding what the words mean. So that's kind of like how I started learning my English. Maybe you are learning your English like that as well. We have uh, one more question about the symbolism in Dreamers. Um, so uh, the Leland fourth grade class asked, what is the symbolic meaning of the one eye in the heart that we see in the book? Mm, that's right. So es una maleta, una mochila, llena de regalos. But those, those gifts are like kind of like strange, you see? Hay un volcán, un perro, una jarana. Señor Calavera is here. The flower, the orchids, the, 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 this. So these are kind of different kind of gifts because they are actually symbols. And for me, um, like the, the jarana, means that I brought to the United States my love for music, right? And I brought also the rain and the flowers of the place where I was born, which is here in Jalapa, Mexico, where we have um, the fog forest. So it rains a lot. The eye and the heart is a symbol that I put. And for me, it signifies my unique vision, that I follow my heart, my intuition, that I see and I have a very unique way of looking at things. And that is a gift that I brought. You have also your very own way to look at things and your own intuition. And that's a present, es un regalo que tú le llevas a todos aquellos que conoces. A cualquier lugar que tú llegas, anywhere you go, you bring those gifts with you. Traes tu intuición, tus historias, tus emociones, tus talentos, las cosas que te gustan, las cosas que amas y tus sueños, all of those are presents. So I would love to also someday hear what are the things that you have brought? ¿Cuáles son tus regalos? Tus regalos que tú traes a un lugar nuevo, a una escuela nueva, or that to someone, um, a new family, or someone new that you meet. I would love to hear that too. Before we start talking about your inspiration and your process, um, there was one question that came up that was a little um, sensitive, but it was, did anybody ever ask you or tell you to go back to Mexico? Something that happened is that at the beginning, I couldn't understand uh, the language. And sometimes I, um, I even had a difficulty realizing that there are many ways to tell you that you should go back to where you came from, you know? 
sometimes people even uh, don't tell you directly. Uh, and no one ever told me, you go back to Mexico. But there were people, I remember like once I was in the bus and someone was complaining to me that, that he, he, we Mexicans were coming to take the work um, that he could do and his, his son could do. Um, so someone was complaining about the presence of people like me here in the, in, in the country, in the United States. And I didn't know what to answer. And once I was with a neighbor and he told me that we were safe where we were at, but if I went to, the, to another um, neighborhood where there were uh, Mexican people, that then you could expect like to be robbed or some, something to be taken from you and that you weren't safe enough there. And I couldn't believe that he was telling, me, telling that to me, who I am a Mexican person. So hay muchas maneras de decir las cosas. Y yo sé que algunas veces hubo gente que me dijo cosas que me hubieran lastimado. Um, and I just uh, had to find a way to, to protect myself, you know, to, to hold my, my own heart and, um, and give myself love. Because when we are told those things, those things hurt. And we, we kind of learn how to give ourselves love so that those things don't hurt us as much. Thank you, Gigi, for you know, being willing to dive into that question and share those experiences um, that I'm, you know, I'm, I'm fortunately, I'm sure some of our students share with you and um, being able to kind of support them um, through how you you know, dealt with that. Um, so we have a lot of questions about your writing process. There's so many students who said, um, you know, that they want to be authors like you, that they want to be illustrators. And so they want to learn um, how, how you do what you do. So there's a lot of questions. I'm going to try to group a few of them together um, just so that we can answer more of them. Um, so there were questions about what age you started writing books, what was the first book you wrote, and how many books have you written? OK, so what was the first question again? Um, at what age you started writing books? That's a very good question. I like that question because I'm going to tell you that I started writing books until I was an adult. I was already an older person. Uh, porque cuando yo era una niña, I never thought I could be a writer. Nunca pensé tampoco que podía ser ni una escritora ni una ilustradora. That, I didn't know that that was something I could do too. Um, yo siempre pensé que eso lo hacían otras personas. And then it was until I came to the United States and I saw books that I, and I love them so much that even if I doubted, I wanted to give it a try. Um, yo creo que ahora he escrito como unos 15 o 16 libros. Um, I, have, I have illustrated at least 16 and I have written, I think like five or six. Um, and I'm still writing more. And, and, una de las maneras que yo empiezo, I, I want to share to you a little bit of how, how I do it, is that I love to write things on pieces of paper like this. And whenever I have an idea, or maybe I don't even know what I'm going to write about, but then I start writing words and things that come to my mind in pieces of paper like this. And eventually, maybe they don't have shape yet. Maybe it's just like random words, like random drawings. But I know that if I put on paper the things that I want and I like, eventually something will start coming up. I will, um, I will start getting ideas. But I never get my ideas just by thinking. Like if I stay here, I think like, I'm gonna try to think of a story and I'm here thinking and thinking nothing ever happens. What I have to do is I bring a piece of paper, I take one of my pens, and I start putting things on the paper and see what happens. I will recommend you, I will recommend that you do the same. 
it might help you too. And some of the students also want to know what the first book was that you wrote. The first book that I wrote was just a minute. Let me see if I can find it. It's this one. Just a minute, a trickster tale and counting book. Uh, y este es un libro con una abuelita, con un esqueleto, con muchos niños y niñas, y con una gran celebración. This was my first book that I wrote and illustrated as well. And a lot of students have asked, um, how long does it take to write a, a whole book? How long does it take to write one page? How long do the illustrations take? Lots of questions about time. Yeah, every book is different. Algunos libros me llevan un poquito de tiempo, like maybe one week, maybe one day for writing it. And then you revise it because you want it to to be even better, you want it to be more fluid or to um, have more of a story. Y eso me puede llevar muchas semanas, like many weeks. And then I start making the drawings and the drawings might take me uh, a week or a few months. Más o menos, I can make a book from beginning to end in one year, more or less. It is a long process. Yeah, it sounds like it. We can understand why from um, you know the different uh, papers you showed us and also what you talked about from your illustration process. Um, so I know there's so many questions that everyone's asking. Unfortunately, we don't have time for all of them because the other thing that we really wanted to do was um, you offered to show us a little bit more of your studio and your process and the stuff in your studio. So hopefully that'll answer some of the other questions that students also sure, have. Sure, sure. Voy a hacerles entonces un pequeño tour. Now, I cannot move my camera because it, uh, sometimes it disconnects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring into the screen, into the here in the image, some of the things that I surround myself with. Entonces, cuando yo estoy trabajando, yo necesito estar en un lugar en donde me siento muy a gusto. Y esto es lo que he elegido. Maybe you can see here. Um, here is my couch. Those are books, a lot of books that I love. Um, you cannot see her, but my doggy is right there. She's always with me. And um, I have a plant right here. And then uh, here in my desk, I surround myself with everything that might help me create a story. And sometimes it might be paper, sometimes it might be colors, but sometimes it might be something like, como estos dos luchadorcitos que están aquí, that they are wrestling, or it might be a little giraffe that was handmade, mi jirafita. O puede ser, van a ver. ¿Qué tal? What do you think? You see it? This is my friend, my snake. And she's always here with me when I work. Um, sometimes we have conversaciones, platicamos, jugamos. I have here, uh, I like to have toys with me. Y como compañeros. Yo siento que son las personas y los seres que me acompañan mientras estoy tratando de pensar en una historia. It's like they are my companions, they are my friends, and they are cheering for the story. I also love to have. a lot of um, whistles. Uh, acá tengo otros, miren. Entonces, algunas veces me tomo un breakcito, descanso. So, Todas estas cosas que están aquí y que les estoy enseñando son cosas que me ayudan a crear. First, because they, they accompany me. Second, because they make me feel happy and they make me feel creative. 
I love to make music. You can see there are my haranas. So I'm not very good musician. I'm just learning, um, but I love it. I love to have something that helps me feel like I can create. And this is one of my haranas. This is one of my favorite haranas. And you see, I painted it too. Le puse una venadita. So I can make songs for Los niños y las niñas. questions that maybe are um, relevant to your studio space are um, one student asked about um, oh now I've forgotten his name Señor, help me with his name your friend who sits next to you Señor Calavera Señor Calavera they asked about the significance of him to you um, and then we also are wondering what you can tell us about your upcoming book yeah well, Señor Calavera is, is my friend and he usually goes with me everywhere. So when I, when I travel and I visit the schools or I do presentations, Señor Calavera suele ir conmigo. He's a very good companion because he's a reminder that life is sweet and short sometimes and that we should always enjoy it. I like having him with me because he reminds me of his stories. Um, y Señor Calavera es, es una inspiración, es un recordatorio de, de vivir la vida. Y pues esa es la razón por la que a mí me gusta siempre que esté él aquí. He accompanied me while I was making my, my, last, my latest book. Aquí estuvo todo el tiempo, nos la pasamos todo el año, el año pasado, aquí en este... En este, en este espacio, eh, pintando y escribiendo. So my next book is about a venadita, just like this one, a little deer. And it's about a venadita who has to go find um, the, need, the things that she needs to, to live. Uh, shelter, um, agua comida, un lugar donde se sienta protegida. And this story is about sometimes finding um, really terrible barriers um, and, and what you can do to be always um, safe and protected. And I think that even though my book doesn't answer exactly what we should do, I wanted to put a book out there to tell all children, and that's what my next book is about, to tell all children that you are so, so, so precious to all of us, que son como una estrella en nuestro corazón. You are like a bright star inside our hearts. And this is a story to let to let all children know that we care so much for all of you, that we are gonna do our best. What we can do as adults, we are gonna do our best for you to always be safe and to be in a place where you can thrive and be very, very happy. Um, and that's what, what my next story is about. It's called Lucero in Espanol, y eh, en inglés es Bright Star. And I hope that when it comes out, that you, that you like it, that you know that it was made for you also. Thanks. And 
when can all of um, our students in Santa Fe expect to see that book out and hopefully um, in your libraries? It's gonna be out in September 7. And I hope that we are gonna do a lot of readings together. I would love to share my book with all of you. Great, we'll look forward to that. Um, thank, you. thank you so much, Gigi, for answering all of these questions. And thank you to all of you on the line for submitting all these questions. I'm gonna pass it over to Maria um, to say some final words of thanks. Thank you so much, Judy, for this beautiful gift you've given the community of Santa Fe and um, for participating. This was just a wonderful gift. So thank you so much. And to thank you who all who, all, who attended, um, your questions were so wonderful. You were a wonderful audience and I hope that you um, enjoyed it as much as I did. To learn more about Juji Morales and her books, visit jujimorales.com. You can call us at the library. We'll help you find her books, share, and all of you who have your dreams and your inspiration, keep following them. Such a good lesson for all of us. So thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Therese. Thank you, Santa Fe New Mexican and all of our sponsors. And once again, Juji, thank you for this wonderful gift for our community. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.